Boys and girls, children of all ages, stay tuned for another original Studio B production right here on The Voice 17104.com. Hello. I'd like to invite you to just enjoy the experience that we're about to encounter. I'd like to introduce to you a man of a very humble beginning, a man that was able to overcome the horrific misclassification of special education. A caring man, a man that will encourage you because he's been there and done that. And I'd like to encourage you to keep an open mind and be empowered to change your life. I'd like to present to you a man of men, Richard Butley. Richard Utley. Welcome to Did You Know? Podcast, your host, Richard Utley, dedicated to the African American viewers. The program is aimed to celebrate African American culture and deal with the real and relevant topics that impact the everyday lives of the African American community through frank and insightful dialogues with local and national influencers. Every day, there is another horrible, discouraging news story, directly or indirectly, impacting African Americans. But we need to look at the shining stars in the galaxy of Black America. It is time to tell our story. Hello, 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 and welcome to another Did You Know? We got an exciting program this evening. I had the opportunity and the fortune. I got a couple entrepreneurs on tonight so they can tell you their journey. Um, but before we do that, let me go back to my usual startup. You know, last month was Black History Month. As I've said to you before, we got to tell our story every month, not just Black History Month. And what troubles me is that, you know, I was reading something the other day where Donald Trump has told his supporters they need to fight to death to stop schools from teaching kids about systematic racism, culture war, or, you know, that usual CRT. You know, my critical race. You know, it's very important that since this is a big deal now, now it's time for us that we have to take the responsibility to teach the kids history, our history. So I'm now putting the responsibility on grandparents, parents, teachers, ministers, community leaders to start talking about our history. Because every, apparently everybody wants to shut it out so we're gonna have to do our own job. So now it's on us. So if we don't do it, you know, as far as I'm concerned, Shame on us. That's why I have this program, so we can tell our own stories, so we can define who we are. And if we don't do that, it's on us. Because I keep telling you, keep waiting on somebody to come in our community and make it right for us. Nobody's going to do that if we don't do it ourselves. So that's the thing I'm going to start out with. So there's going to be Black history every month. So the responsibility is on you. So if our kids don't know anything about us, then shame on us because you see where this is going. And I keep telling you, if you don't know who you are and where you came from, then shame on you. What else this week? Well, you know, as I said, we are always defined. I was reading the other day where a gentleman, he went in with a check for $3,200 he had sold a boat. And he went to the bank. Guess what happened? They thought the check was fake because he had dreads, tattoos, but the check was good. And they called the police because he wasn't supposed to have a check for $3,200 because, he, because he's a person of color Ooh. and he had tattoos. Think about it. I just want you to think about it. 
another incident. I'm sure you all have heard that the, 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 the young man that was the director of Black Panther went into a bank for check for $12,000. He wrote on the back of it, be discreet. You know, don't be throwing my money all up so the whole world could see it. The teller thought that it was a note to rob the bank mm. and called the police again. Two times this was the police. But I want to put this in perspective for you. Because the one with the Black Panther, he was a brother, and the, te the teller of the bank was a person of color. You see, we do sometimes we do disservice to our own selves. All he was saying was, I just don't want you to count my money out, out loud. He don't know who was in there. He had the money. It's not like he didn't have the money. So what I'm what am I what's my message there? My message is that we need to be very informed about that and we need to inform our children or people that we know to understand that sometimes that we are judged just because we go in a room as i've shared with you many times i've walked down the street and somebody has clutched your pocketbook because i'm a person of color and i guess they thought i was going to run past and take their pocketbook i wasn't going to do that like to believe in my own mind that maybe I might have had a few more dollars in my pocket than they had in their pocketbook. I'm not saying I did or not. You know, I always want my program to be positive, but it keeps bothering me about gun violence. We continue to do a disservice to our communities. You know, I was reading something again today. Um, some group of kids, 15 to 30 kids was playing in the playground in the city and one ended up dying and three got hurt. You mean to tell me we can't even go to the playground? Is that fair? I'm saying it to the parents to tell their kids, is that fair that I can't go to the playground? I gotta be scared? We need to do something about that. Gun violence. Reading something again today. A three-year-old accidentally shoots his mom to death in the family car in Chicago in the supermarket parking lot. First of all, why was the gun in the car? And two, a three-year-old kills the mom accidentally. Now, you know they arrested the dad, and he should have been arrested because it didn't make no sense. That, to me, is crazy. You know, black-on-black -black gun violence if we're really gonna stop it in our neighborhood, it's not gonna be because we wait on some politician or some elected official uh, to come into our community to do that. As I've said to you often, we gotta do it ourselves. We have to take some responsibility. We really do. And if we don't, it, it, it's shame on us. Uh, you know, people bring th guns into our community. They're there, but that don't mean we have to use them, nor do we have to support them. You know, uh, the mayor of Pittsburgh, uh, Ed Ganey, young man, good man. I've known him for a long time, a young man. And you know, he pretty well put it down. We look for everybody else to come in here and save us. But let me be real about that will never happen. It's on our watch. That's pretty well what he said, and I believe that. We have to take some responsibility. And if we don't, then shame on us. You know, we don't, we look at it. Think about it, ladies and gentlemen. Gun violence. Gun violence is usually from domestic arguments, accidental shootings, somebody fights in a bar or something. But that's crazy. But are you aware? And some of it has to do with drugs. There's no question. But are you aware that Drug money in America is about $150 billion annually. And guess what? People of color, African Americans, about 15%. $22 billion. Think about it. $22 billion. 
So if we don't solve the problems ourselves, then same, shame on us. And I'm going to continue to say that because we walk around with our head up acting like we oblivious to the situation. We got to stop killing each other. As I said to you before, please, when you see young people, say hi to them. Tell them to have a good day. You see older senior citizens, be kind. We used to be a kind community. We used to love one another, but we kind of understood one another. We got to go back to that because as time progresses on, it's shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. It's just like people are taking all these drugs with lace. And people are dying. Guess who's dying? We're dying. We're killing ourselves. We got to give hope. We got to give hope to young people. They deserve hope. Why do I say they deserve hope? Because we had hope. Somebody gave us hope. So I hope you understand what I'm trying to say tonight, we got to do a better job in our community. But before I bring my guest on, guess what? Oh, Representative Bobby Rush. He been trying to get a bill passed called the Annie Lynching Act passed. Been trying. He been trying for a long time. Matter of fact, you can go back to history for 200 attempts. This is lynching bills. When they used to hang you, they finally passed it. Can you believe that? They finally passed it. And more than 6,500 Americans were lynched between 1865 and 1950. Those of you that live in Pennsylvania, since you think all these lynchings happened in the South, I want you to do your history, do your research. You're going to find it in Pennsylvania. And it might not be that far from you. So let's have hope. I realize now that we have to hold our politicians accountable. As I said to you before, we got to get people to run for office. We got to get people to be judges, district justice, city council, school board, people who's going to be for us, our vested interests. And I don't want you to get confused. I didn't say, I said, I I don't care who it is. You can be green, white, purple. Don't make a difference. If you have interest for us, then we should support you. All right, what are we going to talk about today? Well, guess what I got? I'm happy. I got two entrepreneurs here. As I've always said before, I want to bring people on to tell their story. I want to tell people what they're doing. All of you, a lot of you out there got dreams. A lot of you out there got passion. And you want to do this and you go, well, I don't know. I don't know. And you put it off and you put it off. And then when you, way, way later on, you said you wish you had done. So that's why I try to bring all kinds of people. On. As you know, I'm when I brought, uh, uh, you know, Chris Franklin on, that I always call him the Harlem Globe Trotters, you know, Middle Lark Lemon. And he talks about how he practiced and how he practiced and how he practiced and how he practiced. And when I brought on Brian Majors and when he talked about, you know, uh, you know, major, you know, what he had to do, and how he had to do it. And Mark Hall, I, I try to bring people on to give you a reflection of who they are and what they're trying to do. So today I'm fortunate because I got two different companies on. I got, I'm going to bring the first one that I think is very unique. Selfie City Museum. And I'm going to bring them on because I want them to tell you their concept of how they came up with this. Selfies City Museum. And a lot of you probably say, well, what's that? I don't understand. That's why I brought them on to give them some exposure so they can tell you what they are. So I'm fortunate tonight. I got Two owners, two of them. I got them right over here, and they're going to tell you who they are. But what I want them to do is tell you who they are and then tell you their journey, how they got to where they got to in terms of this concept. There you go. All right. 
My name is Raquel Harvey. And I'm Deanna Ricketts. And uh, we are the owners of Selfie City Museum. Uh, what Selfie City Museum is, is it is uh, basically a business designed uh, for photographers, videographers, videographers, and those people that just like to take selfies, okay? It's not an original concept. It's something that started around 2015 uh, from an art, uh, art museum exhibit, excuse me, up in New York called Refine 29. And what it was was an interactive art uh, display. And uh, it kind of started this revolution of these spaces where uh, you have separate photos designed with different backdrops, props, oversized props that people would come in, basically pay a fee for an hour, and you go through and you take as many pictures as you want. You're provided a selfie ring, you're provided a clicker uh, to take your pictures from your whatever spot you want to take it from. And, and you know, with us being such a social media driven business uh, and uh, Actually, not that, not that I would say that, but being such a social media driven world right now, it's a concept that a lot of people really like. And, you know, I think it's a, a good thing for, for people as well, because, you know, it's nothing like looking at a picture and saying, you know, I look really good there, or, or having that boost, or, you know, just creating that confidence that a lot of people need. And it also provides, you know, that uniqueness when you talk about uh, family photos. It's not that. The, the older Mills photos that we used to take back in the day. It's, uh, you know, something different and new. And the space has also uh, been a catalyst for some videos to be done. We've had um, some business owners come through and create content for their websites. So it's really a unique um, concept that can really serve a lot of people across the board. So uh, that is what a selfie museum is. What made you decide that that's what you guys wanted to do? Mm, that's a good question. That is a good question. Uh, you want to take that one? Sure. We did, Raquel and I have been in this journey of building relationships with people for a mm -hmm. long time. Um, her best friend and my best friend live in different areas. Mm -hmm. So we got together and said, let's do a best friend trip. Her best friend lived in Maryland, well, lives in Maryland. My best friend lives in uh, Virginia Beach. So we hopped in the car, picked up her best friend, and drove to Virginia Beach one weekend. And uh, my, best, when my best friend, we got to her house, and uh, she was like, oh, my gosh, I got this new business that I'm going to, you know, venture into. And mind you, she already had two businesses that she was mm -hmm. already entertaining. So she's like, I just want to do something off on my own. So I'm going to take you guys to a selfie museum. And we all look at each other like, okay, <laughs> what's a selfie museum? We were just not feeling it at first. At least that wasn't. So she's like, no, 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 don't worry. Trust me. You know, you guys are going to have fun. I've been there a few times and I had a ball. So she's like, okay, get dressed, put your makeup on. We're going to go to this selfie museum. I bought tickets and everything to camp back out. So we go to a selfie museum and, and my perspective was I seen all these like younger people and I'm just like, oh my gosh, how, how is this going to happen? Or what is this about? So we get there and by the time it's our turn to enter and go into the museum, we had a ball. Like we just had a blast. It was a room. Um, all of the rooms are prefabricated rooms. So for instance, if the theme is SpongeBob, um, they make the room look like you're under the sea in the SpongeBob room. Or if it's um, Crayola, um, there's crowns everywhere. There may be some crown props or things of that nature. And we absolutely loved it. Um, I already own my own business. Raquel was um, looking to step into the entrepreneurial field. Mm -hmm. And we sat down right after we went and devised the plan. And that was in June. Um, we came back to Pennsylvania, started looking at places, put feet to ground. Mm -hmm. By August, we were signing a lease and we opened in December of last year. Okay, where you are, how come people... Uh, find out where the museum is. I mean, it sounds exciting to me. And I'm glad to know that we got people like you who are on the cutting edge. <laughs> so tell me, uh, 
Where, how can people find you? Where, we're, look at it. we're located off of um, Allentown Boulevard. Okay. Um, Allentown Boulevard and Manor Drive, um, which is across the street from West Hanover Middle School, across the street from JoJo's Pizza. So some landmarks there. Um, and that's where we're, that's where our, our first building is. All right. So, so when can they get there? How do you have a... Uh, uh, so you go to selfiecitymuseum.com or you can go to our Instagram. There's a link in the bio on our Instagram. Um, click the link. It takes you to our website. Don't forget Facebook. Or you go to, <laughs> directly to our website. And um, that's where you can purchase the tickets online. We do accept walk-ins, but because of COVID, we've been trying to force people to book online just so we can monitor how many people are in and out of the space at the same time. I, I think that's very important that you uh, guys uh, decided to, this is what you wanted to do. And, uh, you know, I'm a big believer. Nobody understands this. I, I'm sorry. I believe that if we don't become entrepreneurs and help people in our community to become self-sufficient, that's what we got to do. So I want to commend you guys on the fact that here you are, you decided to go down, visit somebody and look at something and came back and you're going to give central Pennsylvania what they have in other places. But what's important, we got to support you. You can have a vision, you can have a dream, but we got to support you. So I'm going to hold off because I got some other questions I'm going to ask you. <laughs> but I got another gentleman. I got a gentleman over there. And, you know, he got promotions by deep presence. And you want to tell them who you are and then tell them what your company does. Hey, how y'all doing? Uh, my name is Robert Kopman. Uh, I go by uh, Promos by D. Um, I have a storefront uh, called Independent Headquarters. What we do there is we try to get uh, people that do independent, uh, independent, um, whatever. Uh, I call them independent business owners. Okay. Um, but I started off um, gearing towards uh, artists. But since I, since I became an artist, it's been a lot of stuff that I had to do to uh, make sure I had to, I, I had to make sure I got out there the way and not put my vision on somebody else because sometimes somebody else not going to see your vision and take it that way and take it that way. So from there, I started doing my own thing, like making my videos, making my promotional stuff, creating my beats, um, recording myself, just everything so I can make myself, take my own stuff in my own hands. Um, from there, I start, I start, um, spreading out and venturing to other, other places. Um, and other, everybody where I was going was understanding my struggle and understanding what I was doing. Um, and from there, it just started, everybody just embraced what I was doing. And then I noticed, um, it spread and it spread it through, uh, Facebook and social media. Um, it first started off, I noticed, uh, people would, um, Give people music reviews and for like a dollar ninety nine. So that that was another way of coming up with a promotional way for um, to get artists or whoever out there. Um, so once once I started getting that, I started um, adding other things and like people that had their own clothing line, people that had their own books, people that did movies and stuff like that. So I. I actually rearranged the stuff that I was doing and trying to create a radio station um, through social media, I want to say, because mm -hmm. that, that was like the easiest outlet at the time to do it. Um, as, I, as I went, it just started picking up a little bit more. So I had to fall back a little bit because I just got tied up in doing too much stuff. I had a schedule I had to keep up with and it just became a lot. Um, so I had to take the time off for a little bit and start doing other stuff. And once I started doing other stuff, um, it just made me realize, like, I got a beautiful mom. So, um, but it actually started when I was little, when I used to try to find a way to get out and make some money for myself. Um, I had no other way. So once I stopped doing that, I started selling drugs, um, which actually brought me to where I went to with everything, the music and the path that I took as far as um, using my using my, my energy that I would to go out every day and try to sell a drug or, or try to hurt something or try to just have fun and just drink all day. So I took it, had to take a step back and try to 
um, shape it up a little bit. So, okay, uh, and and we're going to talk about we're going to talk about that. But now you have a storefront, and tell people where it is, and tell people what you have in there. Oh, uh, the storefront is called Independent Headquarters. I'm still working on. I have my I actually put uh, base my radio station in the back. Mm -hmm. I call it a radio station because it's not just a podcast. I try to play music, continuous mm -hmm. music all day. So I did a radio, but I'm building centers for uh, independent uh, business owners that can't get a store. Mm -hmm. So I I have um, three couple sections to where as though you can rent it out twenty five dollars a day, come in, sell your stuff, and go home. Mm -hmm. um, so it's three. That's like three areas. Um, then I also uh, help artists. I try to I ask them to send me their music downloads so I can play it throughout the day while I'm in the studio or while I'm at work. So it gives it gives another outlet to where I'm at because right now where I'm at is still in, and everything is pretty much becoming black on down down there. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually I'm actually trying to give people an opportunity that I have. Mm -hmm. So. I think that's good. Now, the address is, uh, what, 19 North Front? 19 North Front Street. Okay, and uh, you have a phone number or something that people can... Uh, the phone num my phone number is, my, actually my personal number is 717-386-8876. Um, I, I prefer calling from 9 o'clock through 5. Monday, I'm still putting the schedule together. So right now, I'm, I go out. So my schedule is pretty much Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay. Uh, I, get, I get like a week to go out and Mm -hmm. See what's going on out in the city. Okay, well, what I'm going, what I'm trying to do, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is to show you people who are willing to go out there and try, and they try because they have visions, and that's why I want people to come on this program. I, I'm not looking for people to come on that. You know, they already very, 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 very successful. There are some, but um, what I'm saying, I want people to look like you and I and feel like you and I. So uh, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw some questions out here and hopefully one of them will answer it. Um, are you sorry that you decided to take this venture, but that is what drives you? I'm not sorry. Yeah, okay. I'm, not, I'm not sorry no. either. I'm just sorry that it took so long for Ooh, me to do it. Right. <laughs> now, did you hear what she said? She ain't sorry, sure. but it took her sure. so long to do. He even said that as well. He's not sorry, but it took so long to do. So this vision and this strength, where do you get your inner strength from to continue on with your journey? Because I know you, because I've been in business too. Everybody had good days. Mm -hmm. Everybody had bad days. So yeah. where do you get your inner strength from? We'll go with you, Robert. We'll go with you. Don't, don't stop. Like I got this thing in my head said, don't stop. Um, and it's been like, don't stop. Because I, I ain't think I'll be saying, I ain't know if I had a store or not. I got a whole store. <laughs> and I'll be like, nah. And it gets so much because when I was younger, my stepfather had uh, a car lot. Mm -hmm. And then I used to watch him. That's where I get a lot of my stuff from. So I'd be like, I'm the store now. Mm -hmm. I'd be looking around like my stepdad be proud. Now he had a stroke right before the pandemic hit. So I couldn't do anything. I feel as though it was my blessing mm -hmm. to be able to take care of. Mm -hmm. They gave me an opportunity to make sure if something did happen to him, I'd be all right. Mm -hmm. So it's rough right now for me because I'm taking on the role of a lot. But mm -hmm. it's been times right now where I just wanted to give up. But don't stop. And did you hear what he said? There's been times, it's been rough, and he wanted to give up, but he didn't give up, which is which is very important. So that's where he got his from. So what drives you to? Well, <clears throat> I kind of have to take this back to your question about how your journey started. Mm -hmm. So mine is very similar to to uh, Robert's Robert. so right here. I'm sorry. So when I was a little kid. Funny as it's going to sound, right? I used to sit on my grandparents' porch and I used to paint rocks and sell them as paperweights. Okay. True enough, right? Okay. Right. <laughs> and God loved my grandfather, but he would sit out there with me and just, you know, support me and all that he did. But 
you know, I got to say that that entrepreneurial spirit kind of followed me along at, as I uh, got older. So when I went into the military, my whole thing was I just wanted to get out and start my own business. I wanted to get out and start my own business. Well, like everybody else, you know, you come out and things change. You got grown up bills. And the only thing you're thinking about is trying to figure out a way to pay them. And so I started doing doing the job and getting into it. And here I am, God knows how many years later, but an old army buddy of mine came up to visit me maybe about five or six years ago. And she was like, you know, I'm really shocked that you're working for somebody. And I'm like, why is that? She was like, because not the only thing you talked about for four solid years was owning your own business. And that yeah, was like the wake up call. Yeah, yeah, you know, and I, and, I, and I believe in manifestation. And right. from that point, I was like, I'm not living my true self. Right. You know, I'm not, I'm not doing what I really need to be doing. I need to be pushing and doing the things that are uniquely me when it comes to business, because I've done other little things before. My mother and I had a small business and that was successful. But again, I allowed things outside to pull me away from right. that person mm -hmm. that I was. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, you know, I need to get back to who she is, who Raquel really is and move in that. And right. this is as much work and as hard as it is and as frustrating as it gets, gets or stressful, I still feel that I'm probably living more of myself right now than I was yeah. 20 years ago. Yeah. It's funny you said that, right? Because when I came home, I had to go in the halfway house. So when I was in the halfway house, it made me get get a job. Mm -hmm. So when I got that job, I was like, I can't stop. Mm -hmm. I got I got to keep going because it that helped me get out the halfway house, getting a job. I had somebody on the outside help me get a job. So being once I got the job, my every day was like, all right, I get up this time. I know if I get up on the streets, mm -hmm. I'm on the clock, and I ain't got nobody worried about me. Um, but it's the getting up, going every, going every day, knowing that if I don't and if I stop, I get fired, and then I have to go through the same process again where I was doing good and what I was just doing. I just had to, like sometimes you get like that, that good win and you get that bad win. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that bad win and make me like, ah. but then after that you like, all right, go again, and then then you like, do I want to go back and fill out another job application? Mm -hmm. No, I'm cool. And mm -hmm. then when my pressure was my probation office. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't stop while I go back. Mm -hmm. But now that I'm at where I'm at, I see all the stuff that I did when I was working in stores mm -hmm. helped me um, be like customer service, I, I want to say. So now I, I learn how to talk. I'm learning how to talk to people better. Mm -hmm. I'm learning how to I'll put my pride to the side. And I'm mm -hmm. just learning. It's like, like a, it's just like a, Learning, you know, the type of learning experience mm -hmm. you get, and then like it's turned around like that. I was that person, mm -hmm. and now you like you took all of that person into your field and what you're doing, mm -hmm. and, and 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 that's where you at. Absolutely, that's where I'm at. <clears throat> you want to? Oh, so for me, sure. <laughs> oh gosh, workout can tell you I was ready to throw in the towel on both my businesses two weeks ago because it's just <laughs> it's an up and down situation. Um, you, it's it's like like playing chance. So I own a hair salon as well as the Selfie City Museum with her. I also teach um, just, um, spin and um, a Tabata class. So I'm juggling three different things all at once. Um, so it just keeps me going knowing that I don't have to answer to anybody. Um, I write my own schedule, write my own checks. Um, so that, that to me is a blessing. It's one or the other. You go and have somebody control you or you control it. And I'd rather control it. And I, I, that's why I have this program. I have this program because I got people unlike you. And it makes me feel good because the whole point of this program is for somebody else to hear what you're talking about or experience what you have experienced and say, you know what? I'm not the only one that has gone through it. I'm not the only one that thought, well, maybe this was a crazy idea, dumb idea, because the object of my program is for hope. Give people hope. 
But giving you hope is one thing, but I want to bring real people on so they can tell their stories. You know, I called them in here. I sat them down. I said, look, this is what I'm going to ask you. And I just want you to be natural. I don't want you to get a card and say, well, this is what happened. No, I want you to be real and natural. And the reason I want you to be real and natural is because my audience expects you to be real and natural mm -hmm. because you help us. You guide us. There's some people out there who have no hope, but you've given them hope. You have people out there to say, that makes sense. Something that you said, uh, and, and I want to I want to elaborate on it because you saw what hand you was dealt the first time and how you handled it, but then you decided to develop your own hand. Five times. <laughs> I was back and forth five times. But, the last time we did. But okay, but listen, it's but you admit it. Right. But it's okay. Sure. Here's what you said. You said, this is what you just said. I'm gonna tell you what you just said now. Five times. Not one, not two, not three, not four, but five times. But man, he kept trying mm -hmm. and trying till you got it right. And this is what I want people out here to understand. We gotta have entrepreneurs. I'm telling you, we gotta have these kinds of things. We gotta have people to have opportunities. Here he says he got a store there. A lot of you got products to sell, but you ain't got nowhere to sell them. You can't go and get a, a, a store because you don't have no lease where you got bad credit. So they won't give you a lease. So therefore, you have an opportunity to go there and say, okay, I'm going to come on Saturday. Here's the $25. And I'm going to tell the world, this is where I'm at. You're giving them an opportunity. You know, there's so many businesses out here. And there's a lot of black businesses out here, all kinds of business, women businesses. But you need opportunity. Right. And but not only opportunity, but encouragement. Well, to be I, honest with you, what I have you on here for, I want you to be encouragement. I think the one thing that people need to realize when it comes to this, and you know, first off, it's scary. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't care what I mean, anybody yeah. says, it's scary. But the one thing that is guaranteed, no matter what, if you don't try, you have already failed. Bye -bye. Mm -hmm. right. You have already failed. And, you know, you ha I think, you, you know, just thinking, I was thinking about some of the opening comments that you made. You know, we built Black Wall Streets. We've built, you know, economic systems that were, you know, just viable and we've done it multiple times that's just how resilient we are and we just need to get back to that and believing that we can and working with ourselves and creating networks and then learning how to to make those networks work outside of our communities as well right. because you know with with that small little device you got in your hand we are connected to the world and I we can Probably, excuse me, but you probably don't even have to go to school. Right. <laughs> it's right. all here. Look it up. Right. If whatever is in your mind, mm -hmm. if you ask it, the phone will tell you. Yeah. Or send it to somebody to tell you. Yeah. And I, and I think, and I, you know, like, but what you just said, I, I think, I think, I think that's important. I think it's important to give us hope, give us dream, and give us vision. But at the same time, it ain't easy. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. And that's why I asked you earlier. What drives you? And even you said, I, I thought about quitting a couple of times. <laughs> but you went to mom. Went to my but you ain't paying no bill. You know. But one of the things I also want you to tell the audience, tell them how it you said it earlier, it ain't easy, but how you have to stay on top of it. I, I hear people all the time because they because I own my own businesses, as you know, and people think that because you own your own business, you can come and go as you please. You can write a check when you want to write a check, and they don't understand if you ain't got no money in the bank to write the check, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. And so would you please tell the audience how important, but you got to stay to it, but it's not really, hopefully you want success. But it ain't, it ain't an easy journey up front. Go ahead. Can I say something? Sure. All right. Now, remember I said that my store is pretty much closed from Monday through like mm -hmm. Thursday or Friday. Mm -hmm. I'm still busy mm -hmm. throwing them days off. Mm -hmm. Just because my mm -hmm. store is not open, that don't mean that I'm not, not busy. Right. I'm, right. 
I'm actually Uber, mm -hmm. I do sneakers, mm -hmm. I do clothes, I'm getting into other stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I'm just be I just sometimes like then when you got stress, sometimes you gotta mm -hmm. deal with people and then you gotta learn how to de-escalate certain mm -hmm. situations, certain mm -hmm. problems. And you be like, sometimes you need a chance to breathe. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if I close out my I'll be a chance to breather. Cause I work seven, like six, seven days a week. Probably y'all do too. Mm -hmm. Probably six, seven. Even when y'all home, y'all take y'all probably take y'all work home. Mm -hmm. Y'all got to count what y'all did throughout mm -hmm. the day. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's still going to be hard. Mm -hmm. So it's life. Like life don't go on stop. Cause like mm -hmm. the what the first and the fifteenth of the month, mm -hmm. you know, like, like, I got to do something. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know? I'm still working a full time job. Yeah. And and uh, so you know, but I think what it what it is for me is it's it's about who you surround yourself with, mm -hmm. because people that are trying to get ahead and trying to do something will hold you accountable mm -hmm. to those things, and you need that sometimes. Sometimes mm -hmm. you need a I understand, and sometimes mm -hmm. you need to get up in a in a swift right. kick to get you going again. Mm -hmm. Get you off the stool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know they're saying sometimes you, you you really just have to have people to bounce it off. And you have to create a circle around yourself that's going to provide that for you. Mm -hmm. And and it has to be like-minded people. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't stress that enough because somebody that doesn't want something will never understand your hustle and mm -hmm. your grind, mm -hmm. will never. So you have to shake them. And sometimes you have to be okay with losing friendships to get to where you want to be. And that's not a selfish thing, but that's a personal thing because you, you just can't drag people along and hope that one day they're going to wake up and want the things that you want. You know, the Bible talks about being evenly yoked when it comes to a man and a woman, but that's life. That's a life lesson. You know, you got to be evenly yoked with the people around you. You can't be around somebody that still want to be in the streets when you're not trying to be in the streets no more. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you have to surround yourself with a group of people that's going to keep you moving and keep you hustling and keep you successful people that you can bounce ideas and, and thoughts off of to keep you going because this is not an easy journey i think what you said was uh was was admirable but you know i want you to almost repeat what you just said again <laughs> i mean i want you to repeat what you said again because let me tell you why the reason i want you to sort of repeat what you said because positive people have to be around positive people mm -hmm. And I have experienced it like all of you, especially if you've been entrepreneurs. You've got 10 naysayers out there mm -hmm. saying, don't, don't, don't. And sometimes it's good to have some people out there that are somewhat positive and you need positive. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's one of the things I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here listening to both, all three of you. And I said, you know what? They talked entrepreneurship conversation. They could feel about yeah, it ain't going the way I wanted to go, but I know I got to have drive and determination. Mm -hmm. So them days that you sitting there and it ain't going the way it's not going, you sit there and go, well, if I just continue to focus because I know they focused, and and that's that's what that's what that's what that's where the inner strength comes in. I I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, like you said, people have to understand, okay, I'm going to be open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and those are the days you're going to be open. So don't get mad at me if I go there on Monday and you ain't open because <laughs> you get upset with me because I'm not there on Monday, right. knowing that probably you've been there on a Monday and two people got it. Mm -hmm. And time is money. Mm -hmm. right. And mm -hmm. so therefore you have to figure a way and come up with a creative way so the other days, like you said, see, you 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 know, like you admit it, I'm a, I'm a store owner, but I drive you, I got to do some other things. <laughs> right. You talked about, you got to, you know, you both got the, the selfie museum and it's like, I got the selfie museum, but I can't retire from the selfie museum yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, hopefully down the road you will. We plan on. <laughs> you know, but yeah, you plan because you, you took your sweat, mm -hmm. your sweat and your blood in it. Yeah, you want to say something else? Oh, no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just listening. But that—that's <laughs> what the, I want this to be about. That I told you when you when I brought you on, I want this to be like a learning thing. Let's just talk. Let let people out there feel some of the pain that you had, because mm -hmm. everybody thinks you're successful. As soon as you tell a person, I own my own business, 
first thing they got ching 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 uh-huh, right. ching ching uh-huh. Uh-huh. okay uh-huh. it's just like what they'll say oh well you can lose this here and you can write it off on your taxes mm-hmm. Well, you can't write it off if you ain't got it. Mm-hmm. That'd be the, sometimes it'd be the people that don't have a business mm-hmm. telling you that mm-hmm. or then don't got no knowledge. Mm-hmm. They're just saying it because mm-hmm. probably they heard somebody else say it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you, that's that, like what you said, you got to learn to decipher some stuff mm-hmm. from the stuff that's around you. Because sometimes it'll, it'll hold you, it'll break you down. Like sometimes you might be walk. Like I remember it was a couple of times where I walk away, like a day later, something hit me like, and I was like, oh, I'm glad I ain't listening home because something else came. You know what I mean? So just decipher stuff. And sometimes, like, it's hard because sometimes it might be somebody that you like that might be like, oh, that ain't gonna work. You know what I mean? Like, take for instance, like, I hear a lot of, uh, I'm not being sexist, but a lot of females uh, will say, um, I wouldn't leave home around. Like, nobody would leave me around your man. Like, People mm-hmm. may think about that with other stuff, mm-hmm. you know? So, mm-hmm. I don't know, it's, it's hard. You just dealing with the world right now. So we gotta know, like my whole thing is like, I took psychology in, in school. So I had to realize like, I worry about um, personalities and like personality traits. Like it may be a different person, but that person may have personality traits mm-hmm. or some like it may be good, but then when you see the other side, you like that's mm-hmm. a bad personality trait, and then it wake and then it wake you up, and then sometimes it'll have you look at the situations in a perspective like like some people I hang around to get certain stuff out of, but I know I can't go out with them because it'd be trouble, but mm-hmm. I could sit down with this person and they listen to me tell them about my problems and give me some good information. Mm-hmm. But I can't be around you all the time because I know like what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. staying on, staying with your mind frame and your path and, and seeing the stuff that you know, because you like they said you know better, you know better. Sometimes you gotta get hit with somebody like you knew better. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I didn't know better. <laughs> <laughs> it still happens. So and it still happened when you get older. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. So you decided you made up your mind what you were gonna do. So you you have a you 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 have a path where you want to go, right? Right. And you, that's where you want to go, and you have a path to where you guys want to go. The question I have another question for you, and the other question is, um, how do you tell your friends, or how do you tell people in general that it takes a certain kind of person? to be in business. And the reason I say that is something that you said earlier. You own a business, all of a sudden, you got to be a diplomat. You can't react always the way you normally have. So you've had to get an education on your own of developing personal skills, temperament, things of that. You had to educate yourself on that. So how did you start to develop that? You and then you guys can tell me because you get people in there to take the picture and they don't like this or they don't like that or they don't want to pay you or they find a hundred other reasons and you sitting there saying, oh no, you done took them pictures and you're going to pay me. So how, how, how do you how do you temperament that? Sound weird, but it ain't weird. I got my I got my issue from like learning off of guards. Guards to say something and make you mad, like right before you right, like right before you doing something, you gotta think, unless you don't go away. So that's what from from what I had to acknowledge, just would keep me like watching my mouth because I know like I get end up with different consequences. Okay. And some people don't think, and I, sometimes I call it thinking for others. Okay. Like sometimes you gotta think for others in order for you to get past it. So you took your institutional experience and flipped it. Right. You know, I have all kinds of people on. Right. So what you're saying is you didn't allow it to define you. Right. And that's what you all have to understand. You can't allow it to define you. Now I ain't naive and we all talk about things and a lot of us do all kinds of things and some are much more lucky or much more successful for, for others. But 
we all deserve opportunities right. and second chances. Right. And it's what you make of it. And what you're saying is that you took all the experiences you had, good, bad, and different, street, street, flies, whatever, and you put it together to make it a functionable, legitimate business that you can not only do for yourself, but something that you said, you probably didn't realize that you said, hey, I'm opening up. Does somebody else want to come here and pay the $25? Now what you've done, you're giving other people an opportunity to taste their dream. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about you. I would, I would say my management experience and my military experiences mm -hmm. has allowed me to, to uh, learn how to deal with people. But uh, on the other side of that question that you asked, you also have to remember your worth. Mm -hmm. And you can't let people come in and devalue what your worth is in any of, of our businesses. Mm -hmm. So you have to stand tall in that, that this is what my services are worth. So you can either pay that or you can go somewhere else. And sometimes you just have to you just have to be confident enough just to take that stance. I'm not going to sit up here and give you a $50 service for $5 right. because then I'm devaluing myself. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that a lot of people do just uh, to chase that dollar. And, you know, I get it when you're really trying to make it, but you have you have to hold firm to your value when it comes to whatever product or service that you're selling, period. And I, I think that's a good point. And I, I'm going to say, not only I think it's a good point, I'm guilty of it as well. Devay. I would say, mm -hmm. oh, well, I've been not charged this. I had a friend call me up one day because I was doing some training and said, how much you charge? And I gave him a price, but I was giving it based on what I thought was fair and equitable to my audience. And my friend called me back and said, mm, now why you, I know why you don't get a whole lot of people. And I said, why is that? Because you devalued what the dollar was. They think you incompetent or you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. That had nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. but it's, it's your it's your self-worth and I agree and that's one of the things that we need to get out of because I've had shows and all of a sudden you want a discount from me but yet you don't even you go down to the Whitaker Center somebody else is putting mm -hmm. the show on you don't know who mm -hmm. putting the show on mm -hmm. they tell you how much it is and you pay it and you sit down and you be quiet there you go. but when it comes to me you want a discount mm -hmm. so now this is what I'm going to do. Time is going, so I'm going to give you each two minutes to say whatever that you feel you want to say to the audience out there. All right, I got something to say. That'll Wait. give them time to All think. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I got them, didn't I, folks? What's up, man? <laughs> All right, I just want to say that the world, well, I ain't going to say, yeah, the world's opening up. And the world's flipped upside down now. Mm -hmm. It went from a lot of big businesses to they gone now. So it's a lot of stuff opening up for people that's independent, starting their own business. Um, the pandemic should have helped a lot of people because it helped me. It should have helped other people uh, make a better decision with your money. If, mm -hmm. you, if you don't make a good decision with your money, it's going to go bad. Um, right about now, I say it's best to invest in whatever you feel good doing or comfortable doing. Um, it'll get hard, but don't stop. That's about it. All right. You have to be your authentic self. Mm -hmm. And if that person is an entrepreneur, then you need to be it. And we can't allow ourselves to act and react in fear, but we have to go out there and we have to create the opportunities because this is how generational wealth starts. And it starts with us, with the small businesses like this. And these come, we come into bigger ventures. We have to learn how to network, not only within our community, but outside of our community as well, because that is key. We have the world literally in our hand right now mm -hmm. on these little devices. And you can be an international success if you just try. But the one thing, and I'll say it again, that is guaranteed if you never try, you have already failed. 
So come see us at Selfie City, 7795 downtown Boulevard. That was good. You're supposed to get, you're supposed to get, you're supposed to get that, plug, you're supposed to get that plug in. Um, I want to say this. I enjoy this because I want people like you to come on and tell your vision, your story, your, your, your journey. Because I want people to understand they're just like you and I. They're no more different. It's just that you were willing to take a leap of faith. And you had faith. And faith is very important. Yes, sir. Oh, one more thing. Sure. Learn, learn your family background, totally your family history. That tell you a lot about yourself. Mm -hmm. So she said that that caught me on because your family history tell you a lot. Mm -hmm. Tell you a lot. I mean, it does. I mean, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised that uh, the entrepreneurship that many of us, many of us, many of us have way, way back. Mm -hmm. It might have been on baking pies. It might have been somebody that was ironing clothes. It might have been somebody that was washing clothes, somebody that was washing cars. I mean, you think about it, if you even go back to the people on the farms down south, they had to raise the crops and they had to make sure the crops were picked the cotton or the tobacco, or whatever, so that they could be paid. So they were entrepreneurs. They had to make sure that those crops were picked. So we all have some entrepreneurship in us, but the point is we all can do that. And some people can't be entrepreneurs. But those of you who want to be entrepreneurs, I hope this program helped you, at least in a small way, say, hey, they did it, I can do it. If that's what it takes, then I'm happy. But the other thing is we got to support one another. And I want people to understand one thing. We support all businesses because we want all people to come into our businesses. So I don't want people to get confused by this and say, I am only want one group of people to go. No, they want all your business. <laughs> you can be green, orange, purple, purple. They want your business. They just happen to be the foundation of the business. And the foundation just happened to be the African-American Black platform. That's all it is. They had to start from something, so they pulled up their roots. And so, once again, I hope you learned something this evening. Boy, time went fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but as I tell my audience all the time, as I told them, you like naturalness. You don't want nobody to pick up a sign and say, well, the reason I got this business because I went to Harvard and I got my MBA and blah, blah, blah. No, these are grassroots people. But please, please support them. There's a whole lot of businesses out there. I don't keep bringing people on to tell their story. Because we need to tell our story and we need to define it. But you know the most important part about the night? Positive. Positive. We talk about we talk about positive things. Give us this encouragement. So thanks again for tuning in to another Did You Know? And I'm looking forward to chit-chatting with you again. Have a pleasant evening. Good night. Thank you for joining the radio show. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> this is the one <laughs> We're here with Voice 1714. Once again, thanks for your Remember to visit us on Facebook at Richard Hunt. And we welcome your questions and your comments.